think of this guy's prince's how, baby prince is a big star man he is a star but how much cooler i mean this channel's cool how cool would it be if prince had a son and he was on a youtube video and yeah. you could train him to be like prince yeah that'd be awesome and show people how to do it because you know people talk in the comments oh like can you I need help with my puppy. I need help with all the time, right? They can actually see every it. day showing the training. They, yeah. That would oh be yeah. Amazing. That I forgot. That's the other, that's the other cool part about having a puppy for me, having a puppy. Yeah. It's like, what do Documenting you do? Documenting it. Yeah. Showing people if Prince is to sire a dog, right? Yeah. Um, how, how serious are you? How motivated are you at with Prince's age of being roughly four years old? How serious am I? Welcome to Beckman Unleashed podcast number four. My name is Joel Beckman. This is Eric. How you guys doing? And we're ready. We've got quite a plan for you today. I know, Eric, you've got like a plan, right? Yeah, I got all queued up. A bunch of fun stuff that you don't know about. Uh, mm. topics and stuff. But first, I'd like to get into what's going on with you recently. Behind the scenes stuff. You got anything for us? Behind the scenes. Okay. So behind the scenes is basically the sessions, the privates that I had that I may not make videos about. And also maybe if like we have a video go huge or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're hoping for. Okay. Anything good? All right. I, I have one quick one. Okay. okay. I have two quick ones. I had three feisty fidos today. That's Three feisty fighters is rough. Like you get it at the, at the end of it. I'm just a little like you're on edge. Oh yeah. It's crazy. Three feisty fighters. Uh, when I see that, that golden retriever that jumps on there as a regular session, I'm like stoked. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes I see a feisty fighter that's nine pounds. Like I had three weeks ago and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, but today was a 145 pound Connie Corso feisty fighter. And I've said many times that rarely is aggression guarding, guarding the owners. Mm -hmm. This dog, it was absolutely guarding the owners. Its aggression was all protection, which is, is rare and which is good. Is this going to be a video? It could be. We've got to look at it and we got to see. I know you like it because it's a 145 five pound Connie Corso. People love it. He was not about it. He was not about dogs, but he would just say, Get out of here, dogs, and please leave me alone. And when it's get out of here, dog, please leave my daddy alone. Person growling at me, please leave my daddy alone. That's all. It's not acceptable, but it's kind of acceptable. That's what I told the guy. Can we jump into something on this real quick? Yes. Okay. So somebody in the comments had mentioned, like, what do you do when a dog, maybe whether you're a dog owner or not, and you're walking down the street and there's like a dog loose? I don't know if you saw that comment, but they're like, what am I supposed to do? Like, right. what do you do? And you I actually ready? had a similar issue happen on, my, on the hike a couple of days ago, but yeah. yeah. Tell us. Okay. So that was for this podcast, the comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've done a whole video on this, but it's like two years ago. Never saw it. All right. You look, you're going to look really dumb and I'm going to look really dumb when I do it on camera. Here's what you do. It depends. If it's a nice lab coming out, and I don't think that's what you're talking about, but yeah. sometimes just labs come out and they look nice and you go, okay. And you let your dog meet. Generally speaking, and hopefully I'll answer your question. Generally speaking, it's when you have a dog and a dog comes out after your dog. I'm going to go through mm -hmm. that. Then I'll go through you as a human being. Sure. It comes out after your dog. What I like to do is I try to put my dog behind me. I know that's difficult. If you have a easy wa a, a halter, head halter on them, you can pull them back a little bit. Then you stand in front of your dog and I'll try, I won't yell near the camera, right near the microphone. And I go, get out of here. Get out of here. So you're already escalating it like from the jump, right? It's not escalation. It's I mean, they haven't attacked yet, right? They're going for your dog. If you have a dog, 99% of the time they're going for your dog. And are you trying to be like a human shield? No. Way? You're I'm trying to be I'm trying to be a a shocker. And yes, I'm blocking in a way. I'm not holding it behind me. I'm holding him here, but I'm just, yes, I am trying to be a human shield, but I'm not going to like, if the dog's launching, I'm not going to be like, <laughs> like, take one for the team. Like, like the secret service and dart in front of the president. Like, I yeah. mean, I will in a way for Prince, but in yes. a way I won't. Yeah. 
So I go, get out of here. And usually the dog goes, huh, I wasn't even looking at you, dude. And then they kind of go about their business. So the first thing you're saying is you use your voice. And you use the stomp and you use the hand. It's almost like a bear encounter. It is. It's yeah. like make yourself look big. It deep is. voice. Or a mountain lion encounter. Anything like that. Opposite of a gorilla encounter. Okay, you ever so, see those gorilla ones where the guys, where the gorilla cruises around and oh, the yeah, tour guide and the tour guide just goes like this and looks down and he's like. Smart, huh? Yeah, it's smart. But this You is, don't pull your chest out. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Silverback yeah. gorilla. So I think you'd be proud of me. Remember last week we had the gal who heard Joel's voice in um, during the story. Well, anyways, so I was hiking yes. up the mountain right here that you know about. And uh, when I was coming down, there was a gal that had a ridiculously big pit bull. It might not have been a real pit bull just because it was so big, but it was uh, a gray pit bull. And uh, she basically said, he's going to come up to you is like what she said on the leash. Like he will try to sniff you or whatever. And I was like, oh, I can't say it's like six in the morning. And I remembered you're like, roll your shoulders, like relax. just relax. And Shake I try to out. relax and I'm like, don't bite me, brother. And then and then he didn't do anything. He was, he was very friendly. But I mean, you don't want to be like, get out, like create. No, I drama, agree. I agree. Know? It's going to happen. You could have. The, the, he's going to come up to you. Yeah. So you got to chill. We're and that trail, too. So you can't really go anywhere. Yeah. Sure. And that's that's actually the point with people coming up to you through dog. If the encounter, this whole thing doesn't work mm -hmm. and the encounter happens, you 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 have and the, the fight's going to happen between you and your dog. If it's kind of a fair fight, you got to like let the leash go and let your dog have freedom to do the fight to brawl. If if it's going to happen, <laughs> you don't want to hold. And now this is different. You have a small dog. You have a big dog. If I have Prince, like I'm going to go. If your dog can go, then it's all right. Yeah. Not well, only because you're you're holding them back they will they will be the ones that get hurt if you're mm -hmm. constantly pulling them in the middle of a fight like there's a time and a place to just to just go okay i can't stop anything here let's yeah. let nature take its course and then you jump in like you might jump in. how do you break right? them up you grab their back legs you grab their call there's there's no great way to break up a dog fight the guy i think is oh Standard the guy today out. one of the guys today had a, a scar on his hand from breaking up a dog fight not the kind of coarser guy another one the um one of my standard privates. canine guy i saw one of his shorts and american was standard american sorry we should get buddy. their names right yeah i'll work on that it's a side job guys so he like talked about like lifting the dog up like twisting the collar and lifting totally. it up. this is all during a fight so totally. this is when things have went uh, awry but there was another video i saw last night and you might have recognized this guy he has two dobermans and he has tattoos looks like a bigger guy and he's walking past people on uh trails and stuff like that yeah. and he keeps his dogs really like dialed in and then what was funny is as they took off there was an Amer or a australian cattle dog tried to run after them once they left like they were going to bite him yeah you've never seen this no okay bummer that would have been can really i tell good. you a story yeah let's hear it we were at the beach yesterday my wife pulls up we took different cars she pulls up and she goes there is a giant off-leash pit bull with pit bull with these two people right by her van that literally the next car i had already, already gotten prints out and and my wife just gets out of the car and she looks at these people and she goes, is he nice? And they go, oh, yeah. And she goes, he won't break that stay no matter what. And they go, oh, no, bro. I I am so over off leash dogs and people assuming because your dog is no one knows if your dog is nice. Nobody knows it. People in this world have children and they have other dogs and those children have been bit by dogs and dogs have been bit by dogs. And then you're just like, don't worry. I'm telling you my dog is nice. So you don't, so, so you don't need to worry. We don't believe you. The you're a, your 80 pound pit mix. We're not taking the chance. But the owner doesn't even know if their dog is nice. <laughs> That's the problem. They, they, they kind of might. They think they do. They think they do. And they're, they're but, but I don't believe her. Why would I believe her? I've heard too many stories. Do you know how many dogs my children ever walk up to? Zero. It never happens. I took Prince. We took Prince to the beach yesterday. Kids are like walking up to him and I'm just like, hey, remember, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm a dog trainer. I do this for a living. I go, just remember to ask your mommy. And then the, the girl who walked up, the mom goes, yeah, she's been bit by two dogs. And I go, oh my God, she still has like way, a lot of confidence. So I had a little talk with her. Yeah. Like I, I, I said confidence. Touch. That was to be nice. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. 
that's insane insanity. that that yeah. little girl and that mom lets that happen. Yeah. She said, literally, he's, she's been with two dogs. But like, we don't, no one else knows if your dog is nice. I don't care what people say. Yeah. The, the it's hiking, crazy. the hiking, it's like, I'm, ru I'm running into dogs that are either on a leash or off a leash every other day. It's, yeah, it's a little, exhausting. what is, what is, what is this? Oh, she's going to come up. To, he's going to come up to you and he's nice nonsense. I know. He's no, like it's, it's nonsense. 90 pounds, all muscle, big old bro, jaws on him. Bro. Hey, no, I, I get your dog lady. Yeah. I know. What if you had your kid with you? Oh, it'd be a different story. But I mean, that's, I I mean, but I mean, it could happen. I mean, my oldest for sure, but the younger ones eventually are going to want to go on the trail too. So it's, yeah, it's unfortunate that like, how about just keep the dog on your other side and walk past? Do that. That's good Do idea. something other than what she did to you. Yeah. How about you have, man, I've taken my dogs on trails for years and let them run like crazy. And then I see a human being and guess what I do? I go, come here. And I put a yeah. leash on so that the person doesn't feel threatened. I remember every time I've never said to a person, don't worry. He's nice. As my dog runs up to a person ever. I remember Bosco when I met Bosco in the back, you opened up the Sequoia, right? Oh yeah. I and remember. he was just staring at me and I was like, is this dog going to bite me? He you're like, no, a... he's not going to bite me. Yeah. Bite you. I yeah. was like, you're all, I'm a dog trainer. <laughs> He had a crazy stare too. He, he would look like right through you. Yeah, he did. Remember when you came over, Eric came over years ago like 10, and 12 years ago, Eric was like, Pipples are they're like the toughest dogs in the world. That was just you. Like, yeah. and, and I come over and I show you Bosco and he's in the back area in this turf area. And he's just pinning it like pinning this pit bull. White pit bull, right? I don't remember. You there's would remember. There's actually maybe. footage of it. And I, this is like the precursor to YouTube because I remember we sat down, you were showing me stuff and then we sat down and looked at oh. on your computer and you had like uh, Bosco, like handling all these dogs and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, this is crazy. And yeah. this is before. Yeah. Five years before YouTube, maybe eight years before YouTube. Yeah. Five at least. Yeah. That's crazy. Bosco at his best. So um, any other tips before we get into our next segment? Cause I got a good segment for you. But, yell at um, people, yell at so people and say, loud. put your dog on your leash, dude. Yeah. This, 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 this isn't cool, but we're going out of focus. I don't need to throw you do hand. the rapid movements and then... bro. Okay. We got to get in. Oh, look at that. Look how clean, bro. Look how, look how people said I'm orange. Yeah. So there was a what comment was that, that said, Joel looks orange. orange. And so I want to bring And They also said, you look like Trump. And I don't know if that was a compliment or an insult. We'll leave that either. to the uh, uh, commenters. Yeah. But, but also, to be fair to Joel, um, they were like, Eric doesn't look orange. Well, I sit in an office all day. Joel's getting like cooked by the sun for what, four hours a day at least. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's getting cooked. So, um, but any, anyways, I, I think this is an important point. So like any other advice, be loud, be tall, use your voice, stomp, let, let them know. And get into arguments with human beings. The only way, the government is not nor probably should not regulate this stuff. You know how to regulate it? People making other people feel bad for those people. Shame. shame. Sorry, that's that's a shame. long way to say shame. Yeah. You need to shame these people because the next person with that four-year-old child may not be willing to stick up for themselves. So have, you have to stick up for yourself so that the person... Off-leash dogs should not be running up to people. Yeah. And isn't it a county ordinance? I'm sure. But no one cares, dude. Yeah, they don't care. 15 years ago, I used to drive, drive baseball fields at schools and there was no one in it. Yeah. Now they're dog parks. Like yeah. dogs, we've, they've, you know, which I'm fine with. It's good for I'm business, not fine with right? People running up to my dogs, running up to my six year old and being in their face. Yeah. And also the worst part is with the kids is they're just so it's short, face level. but they're face level. So oh. you're like, you know, it's not good. And it's I always, good. I always use my body kids to like. Die angled the dogs off and i'm always telling my wife i'm like don't let that dog jump in her face or knock her over like yeah you know I and there's too many rude. rescues where the people actually don't know the full-on history of the dog there this i gotta stop moving my arms yeah if you That's don't okay. quick put moving this is gonna be an audio only podcast. <laughs> i can't move so anyway it's enough about that yeah no so Sorry. no good those are both all good takeaways so 
I want to get into a new segment. We call it the apology segment. Oh yeah. And so this is where we look at <laughs> the people at that now. Joel has uh, insulted Joel in the last several and, videos. And Eric. Yeah. And me. Well, no, usually it's just me saying something that's not true. Like the donkey thing where I said was like a donkey or a donkey was a mule and a horse, which it was a, you know, whatever it is, a donkey we and a horse make a mule or whatever. And mule sterile. Um, you know, and what? sometimes yeah, it's that. not like when you're on the fly, it's not quite as easy to articulate this stuff. Yeah. Um, so anyways, so I know you insulted the Europeans, the doggy daycares, who else? Oh, and then you insulted this poor lady last week who all she wanted to do was the Make-A-Wish <laughs> Foundation, fly over to Joel, have she a sit down with the, him. Win the lottery. And Yeah, win the lottery. And you crushed her, her dreams. And the people in the comments were like, well, there were some the, people to your defense too. The people in the comments... They need to watch the video again. Okay, here's how it went because I watched, I rewatched it. No, but yes, yes, I did. I did. Would crush. you stay up late at night thinking about this? No, they, they, I said, they say, I said, that's very nice. The one woman will win the lottery. All she would want to do is come visit me. And I, I said multiple times, that's so nice. And I said it like in a very, like, oh, that's so nice. So I, I thought my point of that nice got through. And then I said, I said, I'm not meeting with anybody. And people thought I was cold. crushing her. I'm yeah. not meeting with anybody. Yeah. Listen, I'm not some big wig. I was at SeaWorld and you'd have people that would get like weirdly like, oh, killer whale trainer, like especially in Orlando, right? A smaller town and like yeah. people. And like now there's this, like I'm not, I'm, I'm. So you agree to meet people now? No. You're not changing your stance. No, I'm not meeting this. anybody. It's, it's not, I mean, we can do sessions. Yeah. There's other there's trainers there. There's other people there. Sure. You know? Yeah. This is getting awkward. I don't know, man. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not doing it. No, that's fair. Um, I, I, is, isn't it fair? Hey, it's a free country, man. You can do what you want. I can say you do what a I lot want. of free stuff for a lot of people. So I do. Well, I mean, you create videos and oh, give them yeah. to the public. They don't have to pay yeah. for them. Yeah. Right. I, it's a good deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. It's getting, I, I'm not, I'm not meeting with them random people so she was nice that was the nicest thing to say no that was good so did you insult anyone before I, I bring up a long apology about the proofs in the, the pudding. pudding oh you're already bringing it up well the guy had this or i don't know if it was a guy the, or girl we're going through one. comments because this podcast here's what comments do comments aren't like oh the guy has loose loose walking now i'm gonna explain it comments like spur conversation it also means people are thinking it if someone has a comment about something, it means a hundred people are thinking it. So we're, we're, we're getting to that. Yeah, that's right. Proof's in the pudding. Yeah. So I think, let's see if I can grab it before. Um, we were wondering what that means. I've said it and I didn't know what it means. Then you actually said what it means. And then the commenter. Yeah, I guessed. I guessed, guessed. what I thought it meant. Yeah. Um, but someone did make fun of your um, saying Ted Bundy instead of Al Bundy. Oh, they did. Yeah, that yeah. was actually pretty funny. Uh, here we go. Finally got it. Um, dragonfly says y'all are making me nuts mentioning these things and just moving on without even looking them up. <laughs> Laugh out loud. We're not going to look them up. This is the funny part, right? Yeah, Why do, yeah we don't need to because they just have, tell uh, us anyways. Which uh, we love. She says, people. I'm an editor in an Anglophile. Now, I don't know what you do in your spare time, but whatever an is. Anglophile is, is yeah. sounds like you could get locked up for that. Uh, proof is in the pudding be came from Britain. British pudding yeah, is not like pudding. jello pudding as we Americans think of it. More like ha haggis. And they're going to make fun of how I said that, that too. If you've ever seen or tasted that in Scotland or sausage, if you want to get rudimentary. Anyway, a couple centuries ago, they weren't there weren't preservatives in refrigerators. So you wouldn't use salt or other methods to preserve food. Uh, sometimes things got a bit dodgy and it was stored too long. So whether mm. it tasted good and whether the food was actually even edible was not to be known until you were actually eating it. The original phrase was the proof of the pudding is in the eating. But as with most things, we Americans got lazy and shortened it. Yeah. Okay. There so it is. We were wrong. So yeah, we still don't know what donkeys are. We do know. Okay. We don't know. <laughs> and I'm sorry for the uh, the sit down comment. And I apologize for not knowing what proofs in the pudding. Is. Do you apologize for being orange? No. No. Okay. It's just the color of my face with that light there. Yeah, there's a light in here a to circular, get circular like uh, TikTok uh, influencer light that you have. Yeah. 
And that's just part of not having enough windows in this. Yeah, wherever we bunker. are. Bunker. An undisclosed. That's right, exactly let's right. Let's move on. So, um, so can I just jump into some random stuff for you real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll just drink. I coffee. saw somebody talk about dog medications. And but they were mostly saying like the sedation stuff, where like you sedate a dog to make it um, go to the vet. Just no, no, no. Oh. Just to like like Ritalin. Oh like yeah. General like it doesn't work. No. It never works. Why? I don't know. People, people come to me, hundreds of them over the years, and they go, "He's on Ritalin," and every single time I go, "Has it helped?" and they go. No, <laughs> that's why they're there, right? 99%. I don't even need to know. I don't say, did it fix them? I say, does it help? And they, he, imagine this. I think Ritalin takes 14 days to kick in. Mm -hmm. It's like this hardcore, crazy drug yeah. that takes time. So then it kicks in. Then you go, then the vet goes, yeah, come back to us and we'll, we'll change the dosage. And then you go back and then they change and it takes 14 to like, yeah, this is a very difficult no process. No one even comes back. Probably. Yeah, they just give up. They yeah. stop giving it. It it never. I shouldn't say never. I should be. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe once I've heard of it working. Guys, don't like it's nonsense. It's nonsense for dogs. I'm not saying it's nonsense for kids. Yeah, they're generic. They're, you know, reasons why this could be important, right? For people. Yeah, I don't know enough about. You're not a doctor, are you? This thing. There. Boom. I'm back. No, I'm not a doctor. And I'm not a vet. Uh, I don't know if I don't. I th I've seen. So, hey, can I interrupt you real quick? Please. So we I had a lot of comments. Tangents. We got a lot of comments about um, the Beckman Army thing. Right. So we, we can't talked be about. Beckman Army. No, no. I know. I know. Oh. I read your comment. Uh, I guess there's a bad, no bad dogs army. And this is Tom Davis Davis, that's right? So his. someone commented that. So that's yep, cool. I didn't know that. So uh, I grabbed some of them. They're sitting up here. Our ideas. Yeah. Ideas for. So and right. to clarify for anyone who doesn't know. So the idea is like the fanatical followers of Joel Beckman. And most of them are on this uh, YouTube podcast. podcast, right? The hardcore of the hardcores. So we're saying, what do you call it? Beckman's army? And so we had heard the Beckman battalion. Beckman Militia, Beckman Pod, as I think that's a whale pod, they said. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and then the know. pack. Uh, Beckman Pack. Beckman Pack. There's Beckman Bulldogs, and they were talking about like them biting legs and um, some other stuff. It was actually a good comment. I wish Oops. I would have had it handy. Um, the Unleashed Army. I thought that was kind of funny because it's not like Beckman Army. It's like the Unleashed Army because of the actual podcast. That Unleashed Army. Um, Truth Warriors. What do you think of that one? We sound like uh sounds like truthers. Bro, it sounds like I should be like in a stadium and a bunch of men show up and we are call ourselves the truth warriors. The truth warriors. And, we, and we it's it's yeah, that one's not gonna make it onto the t-shirts, probably. And then um the one I came up with. Oh, I just came up with this. I came up with it right before you showed up. Yeah. And it is it is either the Beckman Wolf Pack or the Beckman Wolves. You can't move your arm like that. Sorry, I'm making I don't um, even look at us so that I, I never even know. Beckman French. Wolfpack. What do you think about Beckman Wolfpack? Beckman Wolfpack. I don't like it. Why not? Because I like one of them. Okay. Can I tell you why Beckman Wolfpack? Sure. So a pack of wolves is a wolf pack, right? Yes. And there's like dogs and wolves are fairly close. We talk yeah, about wolves in here. Sense. But also, also we're, we're wolves. We're not sheep. Oh, that's true. Back you like that? You like what I did with that? Yeah, I think that. Let them know in the comments, guys. Let them yeah. know. Light yeah. Them up. Yeah. Beckman Wolf Pack. If you like it, that's your vote. Yeah, I get it. My vote is, uh, you want to, I yeah. like it. I what do you got? I don't like it. What do you uh, think? Beckman Militia. Beckman Militia. Now Bro. that sounds, now are we going to get a knock on the door like we did with our uh, second podcast? The FBI going to show up? What? What? The, the Militia? That's like. I know it's hardcore. That's hardcore, man. It is. We are we are in we are we are in the wilderness training our dogs, taking no nonsense from society. We are yeah. yelling at people on trails. Yeah. We we are a militia of people that don't give a you know what. It's like a one man army, it sounds, but it's more yeah. than one. Um 
yeah. Okay, so you're you're leaning toward Beckman militia. I'm leaning that way. Okay, I can be talked into Wolfpack. I have to think about it. We should let the, the oh we yeah, should yeah. let the podcast I decide. Um. So anyway, so I thought that was interesting. Um. Can we talk about Australia for a little bit? Yes. So I couldn't believe how many people from Australia are watching this podcast. It's number four on the country's list. It's US, UK, or I mean Europe, obviously, but UK, no, yeah, Germany, UK. right? And then Australia UK. too, right? It goes, I think, yeah, it's the three main English space. So it's US, Canada, England, Australia, then Germany. Okay. And then YouTube stops giving you the countries after that. Okay. So first of all, I want to say they said we should do a world tour in Australia, which I, I instantly was like, this is a fantastic idea. Yeah. What do you think of that idea? Just me and you or both our families? Um, probably our whole families because the chances of us getting to go would be Australia. like zero. Your yeah. daughter who starts to be like, what? You're not taking me to Australia? Yeah, she'd probably need to go. Yeah, let's, let's, you, bro, we can't bring this up and never do it. What would we do there? Would we train dogs? And when I say we, we I mean do, you. We do talks. Like we'd just rent a stadium? hotel. We'd rent a hotel area. And we would, um, and we would, uh, maybe one of the talk, maybe one of the rugby teams would have like a stadium we could use. Yeah. I wish we could fill a stadium, bro. I'm not Caesar Milan. He's filling stadiums. Caesar is. He's doing like this giant, like world tour. Like yeah. how many people? It's like his new thing. I saw, I mean, they, they're going to show the biggest venue in the ad for his new thing. Better people, better dogs or something. That's what it's called. It's like a stadium. Now is he, is, I, yeah, yeah. Stadiums, small stadiums. It's impressive though. Convention, little convention centers. It's impressive. That that ain't you know. Would we have to go yet. to the US first? Yeah, probably. That's what you said. Yeah, I think, but I think so Australian. So one of the guys that we're talking about Australian cattle dogs in the last couple of podcasts, right? These Australian cattle dogs, one of the guys in the comments actually said that it's one of the toughest dogs because it's mixed with a dingo. That's what they said. Do you believe it? We're not saying he's lying. Dingoes, there's there's all this controversy about what dingoes are. Dingoes are basically dogs that got wild. They're not like wolves. So they're like feral. They're feral, and then they bred to all look the same. I only know that maybe the dingo ate your baby thing. I know. (laughs) That's all I know about dingoes. I know, but they're not like wolves or like New Guinea singing dogs or like... They're not like coyotes either. Coyotes or like... You know, all the any canines. Aren't they big like or aren't they about the same size as a coyote? Yeah, probably. They're a little thicker, I think. I had I've heard, never seen one. I had heard that coyotes and jackals are not related, but they look almost identical. This is on the from the well, Dan Flores book. Yeah. Think about think about the niche they fill. Mm-hmm. Right. They're both competing with larger predators for coyotes with when there were wolves were like, okay, we gotta kill the little things and mm-hmm. be fast and yeah. No. And they don't eat, they don't look that much alike, but yeah, there's just something um coyotes bigger. Yeah, so so there's just been a lot of Australia cattle dog, Australian shepherd, a lot of people telling us to go to Australia. So figured we'd give a little bit of love to our Australian yeah. cohort. Yeah, we'd love to get there. My wife went to Australia for her senior year or senior semester or something like that, hmm. and thought it was the greatest place in the world. Really? Yes, she loved it so much. I heard that it was like, it seemed like you were like a time warp. Like you go back in time when you go to Australia. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. This is like Sydney, but Sydney is obviously a super nice modern city. But I guess the story behind Australia is that almost the entire population is like just on like the very rim of um, the island or yeah. continent, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. There's like almost nobody in the, in the depths of the it. The Western part is a lot like I heard the Western part of the United States. It's like chiller, it's like Perth, it's like right? chill, yeah, like yeah. chiller over there. Yeah. A lot of good waves. My daughter surfs. My both my kids surf. It's probably we have three kids. So what do you mean by both? I'm at, yeah. Does a uh, young one do it? Yeah. No, he's six. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's working on it. Can I answer a question about the podcast? Real Please. Quick? Okay, so podcast. There's been a couple of people in the comments asking us about whether we are going to. <laughs> you're Bro, cracking me up. It just does that yeah i think it's a lighting um so people in the podcast have they've been asking about whether we'll go to other platforms the initial goal is that we will have video on youtube 
you know, YouTube's been very good to us. Mm -hmm. So it'll be YouTube audio format on probably the large popular channels. This all takes time. There is some aggregators, but ultimately like some of them have to be like directly tied in and it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, the bigger ones. Yep. So there's that side of it. And then one thing you guys might not know is that the new YouTube music is actually pretty cool. I downloaded it for free and you can watch the podcast on YouTube music and it's more like a pod player. So if you want to go to the gym and just hit play, it'll just play it like a pod player. So cool. a little public service announcement for you guys. Cool. Good. Let's do it. So you got anything else before we start diving, no, diving in these comments? Comments. comments. I don't know. It's yeah, been it's... an uneventful private session week, uneventful video week. Okay. Here's an eventful week. Here's our first good. one. Uh, comments from last podcast. Go ahead. This is joyful dog service. Can you maybe do reactions to videos we may send in? Might be another popular or unpopular trainer, dog fights, poor handling videos, or there are even uh, a couple of podcasts that you could react to. Some of the uh, older con maybe, may content maybe for a response, that'd be cool. Um, you know, basically just would we do like something where they could send in videos? Yeah, but then we, we, we got our grizzly videos taken down because we didn't have the rights to it whatever people we do reactions all the time we don't know what happened but it's just we had to take that part out that's we are not, not going to know what we, if we have the rights to this stuff but you can vet it and make a guess yeah i think we, we got unlucky with that one yeah i think i so. think we just found somebody because but you know either way we could try uh, we don't really care right i mean we could put it up if they copyright it we'll pull it down you know all right it just makes it a little bit less enjoyable for the people that have to see it after it got pulled down yeah you know so we yeah you want to uh, you want to get an email going, and but it's hard to send big files. They could, I guess, they would send a YouTube link. Huh? Yeah, if they did, you know, uh, comment yeah. on a YouTube link or YouTube short, that actually couldn't would be they really just cool. put it in the comments? Yeah, they could link it. Just link, you link to videos all the yeah. time. Link. Can we say this now? Yeah, link, link it in the video. The video you want me to react to in the comments of this podcast. Genius. And, and we're there. The one guy did it about the gentle leader in the video before. So like I clicked on the link and there it was and it was the gentle leader short. So definitely yeah. they can do that. Yeah, link, copy and paste the YouTube link in our comment. So this gal sounds yeah. like she's from Germany, Pat Kaldrich Gutsch something. I No one's messed up a name like I just did there, but we are holding you both accountable. Ebook, merchandise and Liz in a video smiley face. Oh yeah. Well, we got the merch. We do have the merch, merch is out. I know, and it's already selling. Can you believe that? Yeah. I was thinking that it was we weren't going to get any sales, and oh. they're already just rolling in. I wonder if we can like pop it in when we make this video and put put it in, so so they can see some of the pictures, or they just you could just show it to them right now. Oh, screen share. Just show it if we can do it. If we mess it up, we mess it up. It's fine. Okay. Um, let me see. How would I share my screen? Sure. All right. Uh, while while you're doing that, I am gonna keep talking so that they're not so that they're listening to things. Okay. Yeah, keep going. He's going to show you our new merch. You can also just look down from this video and you're going to see it on what's called the shelf right below this video. You're going to see all our merch. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. Sweet. So it's just showing, it doesn't really see that good, but so this is a dog one. So this is what oh, yeah. a dog shirt. What is it? A dog shirt. Dog shirt. T-shirt. Next is t-shirt. Yeah, black, white. We've got women's shirts. We've got sweatshirts. And it says Beckman all day. Can you give these guys a little background? So why the why the font, Joel? Why that font? No idea. No? You like probably told style. me. I don't remember. Just like the no-nonsense oh. like military. Oh, right. This right, is right, like right, a right, right. long time ago. You were pumped on this. Oh, yeah. Sorry. You love that style. So anyway, see, he's got the, he loves that style. And then the all day, right? We'll do this all day. We'll do this all day. We'll train all day. We'll do everything all yeah. day. Oh. And it's great, right? But at the same time, you can't say like, we are going to do this all day long or something, right? It has to be like yeah. punchy. No one wants to read like a, a full sentence on, on a, your shirt, on a dog we'll, shirt. We'll do this all day. It's not that long. What, you don't want to say Beckman all day. Beckman all day. So it's really cool. It's going out there. So all the yeah. people that you promised merch to for like the last two or three years that we're yeah. just totally bummed about it. Now it's up there. So go out there, get it. Oh, one announcement on that. Oh, we should do two announcements on that. 
quick thing on on the merch one is that the merch that you see is available until june 30th at 11 p.m pacific time and then it's coming off the second thing is uh i have a promo code that i put Ooh, in let's pin it in the comments ah uh, but then other people are going to see it I okay want we the want people, the watchers to see we it. want the watchers Good to point. see it so say it it's easy i hope i don't get this wrong is it unleashed unleashed we can check unleashed all capitals unleashed yes. 10 percent off and just so you know there's absolutely nothing in them just oh, yeah. like you see right there exactly okay very, not backman unleashed just unleashed and there's very little margin in there so 10 percent is getting you like almost employee cost here yeah so. so but it's fun you know if we were doing this podcast for money we would be in dire straits yes we're not getting rich off this podcast maybe getting right. poor <laughs> right time is money yeah so say we something really money if i was to do a feisty fido session in this instead of this hour yeah. we actually are you actually canceled them right what so this time slot which is two to three ish on tuesdays you actually canceled your sessions feisty. just to do this my late my four o'clock i canceled to lose yeah. money on this podcast yeah so that is um so that's good so um I like this. So there's two of them. Um, oh, this is good. I didn't. I didn't say this name. Okay, but go. so VR. Why do you have to lab the girl? Because I want to shout them out. What I if they're like embarrassed love. or something? I don't think they would be putting their comment <laughs> if they didn't want it. Okay, let it embarrass them. That's fine. Five days ago, uh, it says it's enjoyable to hear Joel's insight into the animal world. I love the back and forth banter of two good friends. Keep it up, guys. Oh, that's a nice one. That's funny. I was thinking when I read that earlier today, I was like, I don't think I've talked to anybody more than Joel in the last like couple of years. Oh, for sure, dude. By like five your times. Your wife? No. <laughs> five <laughs> times more than your wife? No, though? but it's... It's a more. It's insane. You yeah. should ask her. Um, and then this other guy, he said Beckman's Borbles. That's a good one. I saw that one. That's funny, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so Beckman's Borbles. All right, I'm going to keep saying their names. Yeah, Chatar, say do whatever Chat, you want. Chitara Buns. I'm loving the podcast. Keep them coming. The longer, the better, in my opinion. And I enjoyed hearing about your experiences as a whale trainer. I would listen to a whole episode about Joel and his training. I journey. would talk about that for a whole episode. Eric is a good co-host. He always asks oh. interesting questions and insightful questions. Keep up the good work. They're not all good. Um, but I thought that was interesting, right? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So yeah. I'll talk uh, about whale training and big cat training all all day, man. There were so many questions about whales. Oh, really? People are fascinated about whales. Somebody asked, what did you not train marine mammal wise? I think it was a follow up to the question last week, which was what did you train? Oh. What did you not train? I didn't train most of them. I've only trained whales. Okay. So maybe they didn't catch that yeah. part. I'm, I'm, I, I started at the whale area. I did not train the dolphins. I didn't Whale killer whales are just big dolphins, big, dangerous dolphins. Are they technically a dolphin or no? Yeah. They're in the same family. Dolphinidae. Hmm. Dolphinidae. Dolphinidae. Oh my God. I'm out I of think, practice. I think, um, deers are like serve a day. Or yeah. Yeah. Like it's that. all a day. It's, uh, it's always Latin, a right? day. It's Latin, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so killer whales. I didn't train sea lions. There's only so many uh, uh, marine mammals. There's yeah. the seal family, there's the dolphin family, and there's the whale family. Killer whales are in the dolphin family. Mm. And there's the big whales. You don't train them. And polar bears are put in there sometimes. Why are polar bears? <laughs> because they're kind of... They're, they 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 they. they in the industry, in the animal industry, they're to some degree considered marine, marine mammals because they're very marine. Mm. Do you, this person's asking, that they say they love the podcast. Does Joel have any experience with hunting dogs? No. Who, whose instincts are out of control? No? Oh, well, I've, I've trained hunting dogs. I've never trained them to hunt. Have you ever heard of a Munsterlander? No. A small Munsterlander. It also has the two little dots, like the German dots. Yeah, yeah. It's... So maybe this guy's from Monsterlander, maybe Deutschland. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. All right, more comments. Well, can you can you go into that hunting thing? So you've never trained them to hunt, but you obviously have worked with hunting dogs. Yeah, right? out of control. 
you know, uh, uh, healing dogs. I guess that'd be more healing than hunting. Uh, yeah, I've worked with a lot of labs and golden retrievers. <laughs> so I would say I've worked with like retrievers. You know about pointers? A little bit. They're not that common. Really? They're really common. Well, German short hair pointers are actually. And okay, I take that back. Like the the German short hair, the uh, wine rhymers, the Vislas. Yeah, they're common. I, I so should say. What's up with wine? What is it? Weimaraners? Wine rhymers? What's up with them? What type of dog? What do they, they do? They are the most prone dog to separation anxiety there is. Why? You don't know? I don't know, man. Them and Vishlas, Vislas. They both come from one's Hungar Hungarian, one's German. They're Velcro dogs, so they want to be on you. But okay, wine rammers, and I'll always talk about Vishlas and wine rammers pretty similarly. One's mm -hmm. Vishlas are big, wine rammers are bigger, but they're both do the same job, both from the air of the world. They, um, they're, I'm, I call them, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry, dogs. <laughs> so they'll get up on the counter and you'll be like, hey, and they'll be like, oh my God, you're like the boss and I love you so much and I'm so sorry. And then they're like on the counter. They're dramatic. And then you're like, hey, and then they're like, oh my God, I'll never do that again. You're I like, promise. <laughs> and they're like on the counter, like Prince, if I'm like, hey, he's like, he's literally like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'll never do that again. And he'll never do that again. It's like my three-year-old. <laughs> it's exactly like your three-year-old. And they have separation anxiety. It kind of goes to their like, I'll kind of do what I want. But, and I love you so much, mom. You can never leave me again. So what about, um, have you ever. Pit bulls would be third on that list. Have or you, German share. Have you worked with greyhounds at all? No. Come on. Bro, I've trained so, there's so many dogs that like I've, I've trained so many dogs. And then I go, I've never, I've worked with one of those dogs, like a bloodhound. I've worked with one bloodhound. Hmm. I've worked with, I don't know. I'm sure I've worked with a greyhound. I've worked with whippets. Why would, like the problem with the greyhounds, they're too fast. Like you have a problem, you know, your, what do you call it? That me, The go get method? Yeah. Like what do you do? With <laughs> yeah, you're not getting them. But really the go get method isn't about speed. But greyhounds, you ever see them being walked? They're always just cruising. Like they're almost like not a problem or something. It's almost like the bus. They don't call me about him. The bus is like a bigger name than like the actual dog. It's like transcended. The, the bus. bus? Yeah. The Greyhound. You think of Greyhound, you think of the bus, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Well, I think of the dog. But... Yeah, but you're a dog trainer too. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's... um. What other dogs have you not worked with? Can you even remember any dogs that you haven't worked with? Well, a lot. Because you go, I have a dog book and I've, over the years I go through it. And there's a zillion dogs out there. Europe, Europe has like a million dogs. Did you have all those books as a kid? There's no common dog I haven't worked with. Like, remember, like, you'd have, like, books like snake books and stuff? Me, yeah. Did you have Andrew. all that? All I had, of it. I had snake books. I had snake books, I have animal books. Yeah. Did you you ever get into snakes or no? No, not a big reptile guy. I'm Did a big you? bird guy, and I'm a big mammal guy. Someone asked. About and, the bird of prey or the preys versus the predators? Yeah. What do you think of that? Or yeah, you got to you got to frame yeah. up the question for these guys. Are not gonna Someone know what said we're talking about. it was a it was a. I don't want to have to apologize next week and say it was a silly question. We're gonna need something for that segment though. Yeah, it was like, and I, who likes prey animals more than predator animals? Someone's like, I like people that are beta. I like capybaras. <laughs> I like um, capybaras. It's like I like like everyone likes alligators and sharks and lions and yeah. bears. Yeah, they're like I love gazelles. I love gazelles. They're my favorite animal. Uh, my wife's favorite animal is a uh, giraffe. So yeah. she likes those type of animals. Why? Because you ever ask her she one? went to the wild animal park and she went on that tour and that giraffe came in and they fed it and huh. she said it was awesome. Hmm. That's no, funny. her favorite animal is a dolphin. I actually, know. I think, but seconds giraffe. She loves giraffes and dolphins. Dolphins. Dolphins are predators, but barely. Yeah. Big fish. It's boring. So I know we did a five most awesome dog, but like tough oh. dog. Yeah. Badass. I think we're yeah. allowed to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, what about five favorite dogs? Can you give me Doberman five? number one? Just favorite. Yeah, favorite. Roddy number two. Wow. I worked with a. Um, favorite dog. Um, Borbul number three. 
um doe argentina number four counting course number five i know this is also like badass dog list like they you just get this it's like i don't know what to say yeah it's just in a mixed up order but that's i like them so i know this is like not my (laughs) show right but i'd have to throw malinois in let me tell you why Mm. let me tell you why i watched a couple shorts and they show the malinois like jumping off people's backs and like climbing fences oh have you seen this Yes, it, it it took them to the top. Of yeah, they yeah they're awesome. It looked like they're the most athletic dog in the world. Them and pits probably yeah. But yeah, they the pits don't have hops like the uh, Malinois. Probably not close. I but couldn't anyway. even believe. I I literally saw a video and I was like, that can't be real. I know. I saw one that it was like twenty feet high. It was climbing up a base with those baseball fences that they have. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's crazy. And it was running up it. And I'm know. like, how does that dog get down? They catch it. Do they catch it? Yeah, I've seen it. They catch the dog. But they're jumping over fences, like That's like crazy. walls. Like brick walls that are yeah. 12 feet tall. Maybe more. People are yelling Probably at their more. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, they're cool. But they're not cool. cooler than a... Than a Doberman or a wow, wow. I want a dog that can like go up against a bear. And Malinois cannot? I don't know. It's a little small. Get your apology ready, buddy. Yeah. I'm I, there's there's also there's a lot of Malinois people out there. They have their thing. They love their dog. They love what it's for. Like I like kind of the bruteness of the other ones, not this like sleek and trainingness yeah. of I'm a wild animal guy, like, like, like a borble, or yeah. a big roddy. Was the German Shepherd on your list? It was not, right? No, I've trained so many German Shepherds. The females are really, they can be literally out. There's a high percentage, remember pit bulls, I was like, there's a high percentage of yeah, them that are like this. Yeah. There's a high percentage of German Shepherds that are out of their mind. The breeding, something's gone wrong in the breeding. <laughs> over the years let's say dobermans the breeding got weird like 40 years ago yeah they fixed it and then it got better can you talk about breeding versus purebred versus inbred can you like break that down or is it a fine line yeah i mean purebred well i don't think i don't think they're not the same thing like yeah purebreds can be inbred I mean, they are inbred a lot, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's a problem. That's causing genetic I mean, how do you issues, get into right? that with people? Like, I saw that Conan O'Brien, I saw the short from him, and he went to <laughs> did a genetic test, and the guy goes, you are 100% Irish. And he's like, and the guy goes, I've never seen anybody who is a 100% anything. He goes, everyone's 75 this, and they got a little this. He goes, you're, he goes, and then the guy goes, that means you're inbred. And so like, <laughs> And kind of, you know, that's funny. It's great. So this whole thing is complex, actually. But there is that problem of the lack of robustness, right? Because when you're, they get, like, isn't Dalmatians have like sight problems and or hearing problems, right? And aggression problems. But they also have not that many of them issues either. from, they say it's like from the inbreeding. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, that's, and also that don't they say like when you bring some like random mutt, you know, like they're actually better. Yeah. They're oh, for sure. They help the dog with like living longer and stuff. For sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there's it's genetic variation. Variability right? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Also, people I've said this for years to people and I always hesitate to say it because. I, I don't just say it outright because they can take it wrong, mm-hmm. but they'll come out with a dog and they'll be like, yeah, my dog's like. 30% this German Shepherd, 30% Australian cattle dog, and 30% lab. And I look at the dog and I go, that's what that's what a dog looks like if you put 20 dogs on an on a island and let them breed for 10 years. They'll become <laughs> this size, this color. They just become this one thing that is the best for scavenging and like they don't, it's, it's not 30% anything. It's a bunch of things and they all become the same size they can become this kind of reddish brown they're never giant they're never tiny is it so is it a i go your dog's a max your dog you know is it evolution or is it like or is it is it just selective breeding in the sense that the 
dogs are having a selective breeding where it's like they're trying to pick the desirable traits for living in that condition. I don't know. Right. Do you know, again, maybe our commenters can help us. So do, how does it work with the breeding in dogs? I don't want to get into some, I don't want to get flagged on this yeah. channel, Why would but like, flagged? I don't know. I mean, my wife and I were watching this thing on coyotes Yeah, and I thought this is not an appropriate um, oh. video oh. to show in front of, you know, right, 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 right. So is there courting that goes on? Is it just like, I don't, I don't know. You don't know about this stuff, bro. You're, I don't, I, I have no problem saying, I don't know. If I say, I don't know, but when I don't know, people will assume I know when I say I know. Mm -hmm. I have, I am not a breeder. I have not read a book on breeding. I have not. You've worked with breeders, right? Yeah, but I don't ask them about breeding. You don't care. About I don't that. care. <laughs> if I want to breed Prince, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. When, is she ovulating to the owner? And she's going to say yes or no. And I'm going to go, okay, let's Send do the in. thing, man. Send them in. Yeah. Like, I don't know anything. Now, you got to get health tests done. Like Doberman's, they have a heart condition and they have a blood condition. So you have to make sure that the that the both the dogs don't have the blood condition because you're you're a carrier. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a carrier of oh no, the heart condition, you're a carrier. If you're also with another carrier, you'll create puppies that are that have it. Mm. So you got to be careful about a few things. And I'll be careful when we do that, but I don't I don't care. My brain is about dog training and is about wild my animals. three kids and about wild animals and about this podcast and about YouTube. Yeah. So what I love about this, I'm podcast, like Einstein. I can't remember my own phone number. <laughs> what I love about this podcast is that I hit Joel with a bunch of stuff that he's not ready for. I also love that the camera keeps blurring in and out. So I see how you're a little like, uh, caught off guard by it. But, um, but so check this out. So I am going to throw your whole operation under the bus here. Okay. And so <laughs> You're going to be like, after this is over, because we're going to get dinner after this, you're going to be like, why did you bring this up in front of five to 15,000 people? Okay. Ready? Yes. So I would like to have some type of succession plan for the Prince dog. Princey. Yes. Princey boy. Yes. So. I would too, actually. So Bosco. This is a real conversation. This is like Bosco's And we're going to do legend. it on here. Yeah. Okay. So. You know, if right. you don't mind, it's a little uncomfortable, but, but I think it's important. I do too. This is good. This is actually good. We should have all our real conversations this. about this. Okay. So, okay. I, I mean, on it? the podcast. Can I frame it for him? Yeah. Okay. So Bosco, incredible dog. Everyone who's seen the old videos, they know this, um, uh, legend, yeah. uh, luckily Prince comes in yeah. and is just amazing. Now. I think you're just lucky that you train two dogs and they're both like oh. the greatest dogs ever. Total I'm luck. sure it's all luck. So if you did a third one, it probably won't be any good. Yeah. But Prince is four years old, yep. right? Uh, generally, he could probably, he's like at the prime. I'd say he's in his prime right now, right? I agree. But, you know, ba basically, eventually he has to work for a several years and help a lot of dogs. And then he kind of becomes a family dog, right? So the question I'm asking you is yeah. like, what do we do if we're thinking three, four years ahead of time? You ready? What do we do for the next Prince? You ready? Yeah. I, th I keep my eyes out for female Doberman clients and for uh, uh, cl people I see in the streets. That have Dobermans? Have, that have a female. And I would talk to them. And I want it. I want to breed Prince. Do you, right do you human. actually look at that now? Like currently? Yes. I, we're, we got to do it. You and I had this talk like, uh, six months ago about, about another dog. Two years ago too, probably. Yeah. So we're looking, I am looking and I'm going to, there's ways to, um, to freeze sperm to do all that. And that's fine if, if we want to do it that way. Um, but I need, uh, I need a good female. I need the, the people, the owners to be local. Southern California or San Diego, San Diego. I want to visit the puppies. I want to, you know, I want to, you want the pick of the litter. Of course. So. Of course. Are you that guy? Like you always have to have the pick of the litter. No. <laughs> In life. Like if you're picking like a restaurant to go to, or you're like, we're going here, period. Sometimes only because in a family, 
like you have like if no one can make a decision you got to make a decision yeah you know that's that's why yeah three kids like someone like you got it you got it you got too much to do so yes san diego county female preferably not a tiny female prince is not a big doberman i'd like a little a little bigger let's mm. go a little bigger you want 80 pound prince to be the father yeah, of course i mean i i it might seem like a weird question but like he has to i mean because yeah we, it's prince prince isn't bosco's son and prince oh, was great too there's a, there's a there's a sales pitch Same for writer. like take out a completely different what do you lineage and be like someone might be like well prince is just good a good dog in general and then bosco was good you get a third lineage i'm not trying him i'm not trying to prove anything why not i'm i would rather i could i could go rescue a dog i mean there's a lot i could go nuts i want i think prince's son i would do it with a male only because they're bigger and when you're working you want to be big you mean with the other dogs no my dog the, okay. the next one i have would be a male simply because of size but princess there you should have seen him a session today these two dogs him and another dog i didn't say this earlier yeah. my one of my the, my other feisty fido was they were prince was like they were meeting in the air and trying to get as high as they possibly could and prince was like i will not be denied this dominance the other dog is like i will not be denied and what they was were just the other meeting dog? he's like a mix mix great dane looking mix and uh well hmm. i'll probably make if i make a video out of my sessions today i'll probably be that one you'll like it hmm. and then prince was like getting on his back and stuff not like humping but like but he won prince prince won the uh dominance and i talked play. through it the whole time yeah you have to post that one i, I should so i want a male for size okay and uh but i want to vis visit the puppies and have a good relationship with the owners so we can figure out like what, what you know how what, what are we gonna do here okay just to make it more complicated yep uh, you can say no. You will say no. Any chance you mate Prince with a Borble? That would be the sickest thing ever. That would be a cool dog. It would be like a big, gnarly looking Doberman. I would buy a Doberman with a big head. I would buy one. Of the, I don't even have a dog and I would get one. I would think about that. That is the weirdest thing I've ever thought. Yeah, but they don't turn out weird. Like Connery, he is a great Dane, a, a gray dog who's always on our channel. Yeah, he's awesome. He is a great Dane wine rammer mix. Oh, wow, what a weird mix. He looks exactly like a great Dane wine rammer. Yeah. He has both of their characteristics perfectly 50-50, and he's a cool dog. That's just how it works. Yeah, you just get you two just cool get, dogs. You just get a cool looking dog. Yeah. I would do that. So, okay. We should let people be like, well, they're going to chime in on the comments anyways about this. But OK, so potentially Prince in a Borble or Connie just throwing it out there. Sure. Right. That would be amazing. And then um, any chance that it's not Prince's son. Like it's just I'd a... like to have Prince's son. OK. Yeah. And like imagine him having his son around. Do they like that, though? He would. You think? yeah so can, can i tell you a story yeah okay so there's a cat we had a cat um her name was lola or layla something like that and she had uh kittens right over here in the yard right yep yep and uh there was a, a number of them and one of the cats was named was leno because he had like a little tuft of hair yep gray and black right so um about a year later i had brought them back together right for the the reunion and layla hissed at her own son she didn't recognize him it was heartbreaking a year later could have been two but still well that's to say a year like a survival thing right like they're yeah i mean there's a natural like the kids get out of here kind like of a thing. rejection of like, yeah isn't that how or she could have just forgot isn't that how mountain lions are though i think mountain lions like turn their offspring loose at a certain point they're like you're out yeah i think most animals do it was heartbreaking. I'm like, that's really? your son. Oh, it reminded you of like, yeah, being your rejected own, <laughs> by, your, <laughs> by your own family, being rejected. You know, like yeah. get out of here. They're like, you're 18. I, I I saw someone who said, my daughter's 13, and they go, yeah, your 13 year old should be like horrible. To, I don't believe this to be 100 true, but there's some truth to it. He's like, yeah, you're 13. 
like back in the day, like the 13 year old or the 16 year old or whatever, I don't remember the age was like re ready to like move to a new village. And like they're they're <laughs> they're like preparing themselves to like go away. And so they're it's like they're mean to you for that reason or something. Who told you this? Some podcast short. Hmm. Yeah. I the one thing I would say is our we have our oldest are both daughters. Yeah. And they're like the best kids, best behaved kids, I think. Yeah. I mean I agree. Yeah. So I don't know about the um it sounds like something out of that book Brave. You ever see that? book brave it was like I saw the disney movie it's kind of like game of it sounds like something from game of thrones kind of mm, like this that. like going to another village thing yeah yeah that's about. yeah it's old school you know yeah that's weird it's like human behavior from yeah. two thousand years ago yeah you know that's that's weird so or okay five thousand years ago so are there any are there any commitments are you doing a call out like is it like a beauty pageant essentially sort are we doing of. the beckman pageant yeah 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 not a small female i would say over 65 pounds but it could be a doberman but if you got a nice looking Connie, Connie corso or a barbell and the chances of a um what's the dog we were just talking about that jumps like 20 feet in the air Mount, a mountain law that's no chance no never <laughs> no <laughs> But the Kane Corso would be like, I mean, it would be a big dog, huh? Yeah. I mean, it would be imposing. The Barbel Doberman would be the coolest dog I've ever seen. It really would be maybe the coolest dog I've ever seen. It's fascinating to think yeah. about you having like a half, a half Kane Corso. Well, because the Kane Corsos are the, they're the white ones, right? No, Dogo Argentino's the white Dogo, ones. I was thinking Dogo Argentino. Sorry. That's okay. I mean, I it's people get that mixed up. Like Game of Thrones, the, the really gnarly scene where where what's his name gets put in the kennel and the dogs get turned on him. By is that with the evil like guy? That yeah, was the, the evil husband? guy. That was yeah, the yeah. Crazy. They and eventually it's such a cool scene. She puts him in the kennel and locks him in and doesn't feed the dogs. And then they all come out. Those wow. are that. Those are all I believe Dog Argentinos and all Cane Corsos in Do that you... movie. Do you it's remember? freaking awesome and that connie corso comes right up to his face and just starts to smell him and he's in the chair it's so awesome so do you remember that guy's name in the show the guy who was the husband that was a bad guy i it's not, i've been thinking about it as we're talking about it and I so can't, there's I a can't, term we through. use for a video called malice so it's like malevolence right that guy not a term we use it was a thumbnail yep. for the roddy prince video go ahead True. it's a two months old yeah, so malice. Rarely do you watch TV Ramsey. movies. Ramsey. You said rarely. Ramsey. Ramsey something. Rarely do you see any Bolton. type of li like literature, TV, video, movie, whatever you want to call it, with that level of evil that oh. that guy had in yeah, that. I know. I mean, I'm watching that like, wow. You want this guy to get his right? Yeah. There's two people in there. You and want then he to got it. They Joffrey gave it to him. and him. They all get it. Oh, Joffrey. So funny story. They all get it. Has nothing to do with dogs or yeah. wild animals. Is what wasn't it you who was saying I should watch? Is it Sopranos? Yep. I'm I think I was like giant Sopranos fan. You were like, hey, you should watch I Sopranos. Love it. I said, I still watch. Yeah, it. no, that's cool. I I, I watched Sopranos. You're like, you should watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I watched and, it. You're like, do it right now. Again and again. And do you feel that way about Game of Thrones? No. You really? No. That's I feel that way work. about The Office and about um, 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 Sopranos. Sopranos. That's it. I'm That's just my opinion. What I've actually seen. Like, yeah, to see something more than once, like a full series, that's a big investment. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's I watched game. Of, I watched Game of Thrones again, but just with my wife. So you've watched it twice? Yeah. But I've watched The Sopranos probably eight times through eight times have you seen yeah. um breaking bad no i don't watch a lot of tv but like i'll go to bed at night and i'll just watch and it's i don't have to think i just watch so have you never seen breaking bad i have would you watch it twice uh yeah i would i haven't watched it twice but i would i would too yeah there's like some high that's like what the beckman dog training channel is on youtube it's at like high level imbd top five that you're like 
let's go watch this video again. No? I agree. And here's why. <laughs> if I do say so myself, here's why I agree. If you watch the Sopranos or the early seasons of the office, there is new, especially the Sopranos. There is new things every time because there is nuance. Mm -hmm. I believe my channel has nuance. I believe that not everything is said out loud and spelled out in everything. Mm -hmm. And that's to some degree intentional. And you can watch it over and over again or twice and not and see different stuff. That's what I think. I'm going to pivot this right back to yeah. the breeding of Prince. Okay. Which I think people will be a fan of. Um, what do you we'll think see, about, um, and we also <laughs> don't really care. Yeah, uh, that's true. What do you think about, um, so the Doug, so I'm fascinated by the Doug Argentinos. Okay. Like a, I've been learning Spanish and they're Argent from Argentina, supposedly have confirmed kills of mountain lions is yeah. what they say. Yeah. As you would say. Yeah. Um, would you ever breed Prince with a Dogo? I guess so. I would barely breed Prince with like, like as I think about it, like a Borbor kind of like, yeah, if you, it would be fine. But like people are like, like I, um, Jason Corey, who him and I have talked, he's a, he's a fan of mine. And I'm a fan of his. He's an Instagram guy, a, a YouTube guy. No? He like has a uh, Kane Corso or multiple. Mm. He's a great guy. I, I really like that guy. Um, he's like, he's got, He's got Connie Corsos. Um, America's Standard Canine. He's got Connie Corsos. This group, they've got this. This group, they've got this. Like, it's kind of my thing. Yeah. Dorman's a kind of my thing. It's a trademark. It's a trademark. So doesn't it seem like I should just keep going with Dobermans? I mean, it's definitely not broken. Yeah, right? it's not broken. They say if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I wonder if he would be even... I mean, he's already doing good at sculpting baubles and like... I mean, that one, I mean, he, he wasn't dominating him, but I mean, bro, it's like, I think I'm tough and I'm like, there's always someone, I don't think I'm tough. I was, I was going to say, if I think I'm tough and then I meet some guy and I'm yeah, like, there's always someone tougher. And listen, people think I'm like on there, like going like, let like watch Prince do this to this dog. It it's only good if the dog is helped. That's all yeah. I care about. But imagine if I, if, if, if Prince and a giant female horrible mated and then i literally had like the attitude that i can train in a dog okay with the size and the natural attitude of yeah. a dog saying i'm not putting up with anything then i trained them on top of that i literally could have by the way when i say badass i don't mean hurting dogs i mean a dog that can come out and be so He's big imposing. and imposing and hold himself back and say listen you're scared i'm not going to do anything uh, you're dominant. I'm just going to let you know I'm a little more dominant. You're this. I'm going to sure. I'm going to, they're going to change their tactics like Prince does mm -hmm. to, to make the dog feel good. But if I could train that, which I could, then you literally have the best helper dog in the world. Prince, Prince is the best helper dog in the world, but he still has moments where he goes, I don't want to tangle with that guy. And that, that might be a plus. It, it might be a problem. It might be good. Like he shouldn't want to tangle with every dog. But what percentage of dogs that come to the facility is Prince easily able to um, exert some type of dominance in so that he can do what he does in that way? I mean, it's what? 95. 95. 95. So there's 5% of the inhabitants or the... Yeah. The clients, villagers, whatever you call, right? Five percent of them that you're like, okay, we got our hands full, like, yeah, like, like a dogo. We or, don't need this. This is a fight. Yeah, we can't have a fight. We it's, need to use different tools. We need to do more desensitization. We need to change the owners' um, expectations of what what we're doing. Like, do no you fights? Do you know any personality differences between between? Uh, Cane Corso, Borbles, and Dog Argentinos. Is there anything you've observed as far as like, like, m not necessarily man mannerisms isn't the right word, but like, just like their behavior and like their deportment, the way that they conduct themselves is, is one like more like loose cannon and the other one not? I would say yes. Yes. Just I, from your experience. Yes. I would say the Cane Corso is the most human protect protective dog out of those three 
Is that something you looked for? Probably not, right? I mean, it's weird. I, I don't want to get too far down this road because this, I think it's going to be a little boring and I actually have to think about it for a minute because I've never thought about it. Take, take your time. The Dogo Argentino is a, is going to go off a little more like ho- half cocked, I think. There's a prey, there's a wildness, a, some, right? Wildness element that needs to be in them a little more than I would say a Cane Corso, who is, who is a little more for like people protection, right? Then there's the Borble, who is the biggest of them all, and probably is like the big guy who never really needs to say anything. Now, um, what's the dog's name? The Borble that we have on the channel? Beast? No. No, it's uh, it's something like beast. It starts with a B or something, doesn't it? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Big borble. So there's been a few borbles. So, so a dogo argentino. They, I mean, do you think that a borble or a cane corso could do what a dogo argentino did to like a mountain lion, or multiple? I don't maybe? think the, I don't think either of them could possibly catch the mountain lion as well. You think that the Dogo's faster. Yes. Okay. He's built. You look at him. He looks like they look like a missile, not like a Greyhound missile or even a Doberman missile with that style. But yeah. they're they're they've you've got to be faster than the other two. They're smaller. <laughs> Do you remember what the thumbnail that I made was for the Dogo Argentino? What it said on the thumbnail? Schwarzenegger. <laughs> it was yeah. like Dogo Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, so buff. That Connie Corso today was like, I don't want to hurt anybody, but. I'm a little nervous and I'm not letting and I he would bark and then like hold himself back and look at his dad and then freak out on dog and then look at his dad. He's just like all protection all the time. So would you if if people were like, hey, I've got this dog, we want you to breed it. We want to be the what is or well, we won't no. don't worry about what's called. But so if they do that, like would you like how would you analyze a dog? Forget the blood test. I and think stuff? I wanted Doberman. Okay. Well, can we talk about like this <laughs> pipe dream of mine for just like okay. two minutes and then we'll do the rest of Doberman. We'll just talk right. Doberman's for a little bit. Female of either uh, uh, Borble or uh, Dogo Argentino or Cane Corso, I would take almost any size female because it would be, be the, huge, the right? offspring would be bigger than Prince. Yeah, by a okay. lot, right? Well, it depends. If it's a Dogo Argentino, it might, be not, might not be that much bigger. It'd be more a, muscular though. Yes. For sure. Yes. Um... Yeah, I would. What was your question? But like, what would you like? What are the? I'm not talking about blood tests, but what were the? Personality. Would you look at them and be like, like, how would you analyze oh, yeah. the dog? Oh my god, I'd look at. The, I want a confident dog. Gen- so for gen- the female, you'd fear want it to be. can be genetic. Fear is passed down, or some remnants of fear it's is a neuroticism. Probably you. That it's got to be a confident dog. A number one. It's got like a Conor McGregor type of dog. You yeah. need something that's like game ready to go not afraid nice yeah i mean not yeah yeah not game bread i didn't say yeah that, okay game yeah. yeah so but i mean how how important is that like would you like look at these dogs and be like well there's something about this dog i don't like it just doesn't yeah fit that's all i do is watch dogs and tell the clients like here's your dog's nature so i would just look at the dog's nature it's got to have good nature it's got to be that breed. It's got to be good representation of that breed, and what the and then we would yeah. And so there's what if it was a male? Like I know obviously, <laughs> let's not I go hope there. You know. <laughs> that this yeah. podcast isn't about that, Joel. So like, what if it was like a male? Like okay, I'm not talking about Prince, but yeah, like yeah, just yeah. a different dog. What would you what would you look for for a male? The same, same thing. You wouldn't yeah. like look for extra dominance because isn't the female generally a little bit less dominant than a yes male for yes. that you know yes. tit for tat or whatever yes the females are a little bit less dominant okay so by the way i can't remember the borbles name the breeders got involved uh, not involved in a good way they comment on my instagram and they're like where are the because everyone is asking the name of that black borble kong right kong yeah and so the uh the 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 breeders were commenting and reposting because we had a it went pretty big on Instagram too. One of the uh, short from Kong and the breeders which are in like England. U- UK. Something. Yeah. Yeah. They that. got involved. Um, Fly so, out here. So guys. I would look for, I would look for 
that kind of temperament, like a Kong temperament. Just that like bold, but yet calm and just confident and sure yes. of themselves. It's the greatest Overstep. thing in the world. And then that disarms everyone, It's the greatest everyone, thing right? in the world. You should be a person like that. Yeah. You should be a man like that. To jujitsu. Just like. Yeah. And just be cool. Yeah. To everybody. Yeah. It's like. Uh, and be confident. There's and a, show your kids your confidence. So they are confident. There is like a, a power lifter. Not a power lifter. World's strongest man. His name was Magnus. Mm -hmm. Samuelson, I think. Yeah. Something. And um, big. He used to say, I'm a Viking. He was this yeah. really big guy. It's the, and. Uh, they asked him like, what, you know, like, what do you do in your free time? He's like, I like to garden. Yeah. And they're like, what? And they said, you know, we thought, and he's like, no, he's like, you know, it's, it's like the dog, you know, the yappy dog. <laughs> I don't really want to fight. He's like, I like me. He's like, I'm not trying to, like you said, I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just, Bro. he just knows like he could, like, I love jujitsu. I love all that stuff. A guy, the size of this guy we're talking about, uh, Magnus Samuelson, I think, I, I hope I don't get his name wrong, whatever it is. He's so big, he could pick us up and just throw us through the window. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's just I've no. Him. He's like six. I feel like he's like six, he, seven. He, six, or what's the guy from Game of Thrones? I thought that's the guy we're talking about. No, that um, his name is uh, Hathflor, Hathor uh, Bjornson. Uh, but he goes by, they call him Thor, I think, or something like that. But anyways, they, they're both in, the, they're cut from the same cloth. Yeah. This guy was just a little bit earlier. He's blonde. But anyways, like. You know, he doesn't walk around trying to like threaten people. He's just <laughs> relaxed. Yeah. Who's our guy, Jocko? I saw a yeah. podcast with him. He goes, I am leaving a fight. Like yeah. I am, I am walking away and the guy's yelling at me and I am walking away. He goes, it is dangerous stuff. And that's my thing with Prince and mm -hmm. fighting and stuff. Like it's a calculated risk that I take mm -hmm. with him, but it is never for anything other than to help the dog. The and it has to yeah. be safe and i would rather prince walk away than engage when he do isn't sure that it's going to help the dog it's all it's about like walk away it's dangerous stuff yeah and what's the beauty of that My is dog the would strength whoop prince I know okay, they, say bro. All, they say it all the time and they, i mean not a lot of people but there's like that one percent that says it but an interesting yeah. thing about jocko is that it's not that he's just some like scared guy that just doesn't want to fight like he's a That's long point. time Jiu-jitsu, Jiu black belt, like seal, or I yeah, Navy. Yeah, he's a Navy SEAL. Like he's a total savage. He's big. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's, you know, yeah, pretty stout, right? So yeah. for him, and then he said that, and then uh, uh, an old jujitsu guy that I knew, he said that to Joe me. Joe Rogan said it before. It's like yeah. I'm not doing. I'm not getting involved. Dude, my my professor told me he said, dude, he's like, never do that. He's like, just like you don't have anything to prove. Like, yeah, just take off, dude. Like. Yeah, you you don't need to get validation from other people by like rolling around with them on in, on the ground in the street. Like it's a bad Bro. look. Uh, it's really stupid, and you see so much crazy stuff on YouTube and on shorts and reels and stuff. But what's sad to me too is a lot of it's like, um, a lot of it's like mental illness. You know, when you really look at what's happening, and or even these people that are like, and I'll my dog will whoop your dog. Like, yeah, it's like it's there's strange. got to be a little bit of because to think like, you know to think about like wanting to have your dog hurt another dog. Yeah. It's effing jacked up. Yeah. Like that's not, that's not what this channel is about. Maybe other channels are, but yeah, no, that's like super heavy. Um, we got a little longer today, not just for the requests, but we'll probably have to do a little bit of chopping on this, on this podcast. So we got to let it so. run a little bit No, I mean, I think that I think this what are we gonna chop? Prince thing is fascinating. Oh, Okay. So, okay, we, we got to get back to this part. We got to get back to the prince siring. I love okay. that word, sire. It sounds like okay, Elton we got to move off it a little bit. Yeah, but uh, no. I think the Beckman Battalion, or the uh, Beckman Wolf Pack, is going to love it. Or the Beckman Militia. Can you imagine? Think of this guy's prince's how, baby. Prince is a big star, man. He is a star, but how much cooler? I mean, this channel is cool. How cool would it be if Prince had a son? And he was on a YouTube video and yeah. you could train him to be like Prince. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And show people how to do it. Cause you know, people talk in the comments, Oh, like, can you, I need help with my puppy. I need help with all the time. Right. They can Just actually see every it. day showing the training. They, yeah. That would oh be yeah. Amazing. That I forgot. That's the other, that's the other cool part about having a puppy for me, having a puppy. Yeah. It's like, what do you do? Documenting it. Yeah. Showing people. So, Okay. 
if it was a Doberman, then you're looking for the exact th same things. You're looking for the genetic side that you're talking about. And the then you're looking- The nature of the dog, yeah. The nature. More Prince than Bosco, nature-wise? No, more Bosco than Prince. More confident, more- Prince was more built, dominant. Bosco was born. You didn't need, Bosco's didn't need to be taught to disarm those situa nope. situations. You can see Prince's progression. You can look back a year and me say in a video, Prince is becoming what I need him to become. You can see the moment that it happens. It's about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Bosco was born with every, I don't want to say every skill that, I, I can't say that. You can't take the nature out of nurture. Okay, yeah. Okay, quick, quick story. I take Bosco, he's six months to a year. I don't know. I'm at a client's house. Her dog's a little, she's not sure how her dog is with other dogs. I was still mainly a positive reinforcement trainer at this point. I go, he's the dog's 40 pounds. What's he going to do to Bosco? Bosco's probably full grown. So I, let's assume he's like nine months mm -hmm. to a year. I open the side door. I open the side gate. Bosco comes in. The dog flips the heck out and it runs up to Bosco in a frenzy barking and lunging and just being right here on Bosco's like near Bosco's face. It looked like I watched Bosco the whole time. It was like there was no dog there. He knew to ignore the dog, to defuse the dog. Then he peed multiple times around the yard and then he went and got a ball and dropped it in front of the dog and disarmed him. Like it was the most legendary thing I've ever seen from a young dog. Like that's not trained. Yeah. It was just, he was like, you won't do anything to me. He's, yeah. And he's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go at you because I know it's going to start a fight, but I'm not going to back down. And then it just got better and better and better from there. Bosco, he never, he never, everyone, every dog wanted to be his best friend. And, and what is it? They want to be him or be with him what is uh guys want to be him. charismatic yeah so it was so did you get and prince is right there he's just he needed to be built more you got prince after bosco passed is that true yeah like a year later hmm that was a rough transition huh yeah yeah the bosco death story which i don't think we should get into to be honest with you it was weird and rough and I should tell it. We should tell it on the next podcast, honestly, because I have advice for going to, on, on how to deal with vets. Yeah. I and like all the stuff that can go wrong and, and what you have to watch out for and how you have to keep hold your vets accountable Yeah, because they're people who are trying to make money just like every person is trying to make money. Yeah. And they have big student loans and you're, you're starting to encroach on next week's podcast that's a good topic for next week's podcast yeah. um and Bosco's so passing let's say for, i've never talked about it for um you know if prince is to sire a dog right yeah. um how how serious are you how motivated are you at with prince's age of being roughly four years old how serious am I? I'm very serious. How motivate motivation means work. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna have to work. We're, we're not busy enough, right? I don't want to do much. Yeah. So I don't so wanna... somebody who's more flexible who'd be willing to drive them over or something. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Potentially. Yeah, yeah. Um we have to work on an agreement. Yeah. Like, I mean your puppy agreement. Like you gotta be cool. Visitation with rights. Yeah, like there's a lot to work out. And then also like, but this is this is going to play out. It has to be somebody that we can bring the camera over and mm -hmm. look at these puppies and yeah. me, me tell which puppy I choose and why. And they should be, yeah, that should all. That go. means that the camera's going to have to come in this person's home. Yeah. Gotta there's have a lot a nice to house. this. Real nice house. Yeah. Have Good a nice lighting. house so that it's better for, for YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So um, normally is that 12 weeks when they can... Uh, transfer title so to speak when do you get to keep eight. the dog eight now or is that Sorry, is that for all dogs yeah is that like considered early no i think it's a little early personally <laughs> but you know breeders want to get rid of dogs that's part if of the you business want me right to tell you the truth of it 
<laughs> they're breeding. They're not like they don't like. Yeah, they're ready. Them. They're ready to make some money and get rid of the dogs. Okay, so eight weeks. How cute are the dogs at eight weeks? Ridiculous. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Would they're your cute. kids just cute. love this or what? Yes, my kids would love it. Would you ever get two? <sighs> I'd have three dogs. Yeah, three Dobermans. Well, one half Connie Course. <laughs> i'd have one and a half two and a half dobermans um no i'd take i'd keep one okay so you get one uh I and i get one dog oh that's i want not a, a terrible idea i want a half borble mm. my three-year-old walk it it's not a bad idea you get one no you know what'd be cool though is um well then i already know a good trainer so yeah <laughs> tr- yeah free board free training <laughs> but i think like so no, but don't you think the cadence is like, you know, you look for one, hopefully they're born in under a year, maybe less. From now. Yeah. From today's yeah. date. What's today's I date? Think it happens pretty fast. June 6th. Yeah. So maybe then you have another one and then maybe four years from then you'd get another one. Right. Because I mean, uh, in what, five plus, oh, in five years. I'd wait to get another one. I'd wait till Prince passes. Mm-hmm. But think- Prince won't be working after eight or nine yeah that's true right yeah we'll see that'd be know. sweet um, but you're right you're the one who brought that up because i waited i knew bosco did not want a puppy in the house so mm-hmm. we chose not to get another dog while he was alive and he was also like not doing or he was old and not yeah doing well, right so yeah that yeah. might have not have been good for him anyways it wouldn't even have been good if he puppy wasn't in great physical shape at the time yeah um it's not exciting though to like like, what would you call it? What would you, what would you call? It? I don't know. I think king or king, something. Yeah, king would make sense. Prince would be like, wait a minute. Oh, that's true. But Prince doesn't. What's a know mix? What's a cross what? between Bosco and Prince? Oh yeah, that's something. a good idea. Something. I, but that's the beauty of the podcast is we have all these people that yeah come up with these great ideas. Yeah. I I don't know how people are going to think about this, but like. This has to be, I think this is the most fascinating podcast. This part about mm. Prince and like having another Prince, so to speak, and training it from like the very beginning and documenting it. I mean, hmm. Prince. Yeah, you've talked about that for How a long old time. was Prince though? I got him at four months. He was returned to the breeder. Oh, can we talk about that real quick? Yeah. So, so we get this comment question all the time and we shouldn't even have to answer it, but I know that. Um, the people that are following this channel aren't even the ones that are asking it, but they're always saying like, did you dock Prince's tail? Did you do his ears? Yep. What's the answer to that? No, I didn't. He breeder did it and then he was returned to her and then we got him later. And so why four months? Like what was it that caused that? He, he was just, uh, he was just a lot for the lady to handle and the lady's mom. This is for Prince, right? Yeah huh that's i think um and she did a lot of due diligence and me and my family walked in and prince went right up to my daughter loved her and loved her and the lady knew right away how okay so yeah they were younger um and so but that isn't ideal to four month old dog for you generally generally i want to raise the dog Mm -hmm. uh from eight weeks um yeah i lost a little bit of time yeah, so it would be much better to um it'd be better at eight weeks. Yeah, it would be fun to uh bro. The breeder, did I tell you the breeder contacted me? There's like two breeders of Prince and the same breeders as Bosco. I mean, if we're just talking about whatever we want on this podcast, she contacted me a co- a year ago and she's like, We saw that video and like one of the one of the ladies breeders like worked together. Which one was it? Which video? I think it was the hound video, the one that went big. Yeah, because everyone. And she's like, she goes, "We want to just make sure that people know Prince isn't mean." And I'm like, "Did you see the video? You're all Prince is like the most famous dog in the world. Like people love him. Like seven million. And the the the, the breeder that called me, the one I know, she was super nice and she's super awesome. And. I don't know the other one much. And she was the one that had concerns. It's like, oh my gosh. Like, yeah, there's a couple of issues. It bothered me. You have 7 million people almost, 6.7 million. Seen that video. Have seen that video. 
he helps the dog. He helps hundreds of dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Hundreds. yeah. yeah. Um, definitely them. hundreds of dogs. They it's can friendly. see the change yeah. in the dog. I mean, I think you just have to do your, you meaning they have to do their homework a little bit. Like look at what the dog's done. Yeah. That dog's done more than almost every dog. Yeah. Not since like Lassie has somebody yeah. had a dog that important. Yeah. You know? Maybe. I mean, that's, that's pretty wild. That's like, uh, yeah. You know, so that conversation bothered me. Yeah. And so there's also that purebred Doberman kind of thing, right? Like this, we have the best type of Dobermans, right? Whereas at least oh. if you went with like a Dogo or a Kane, it's like, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be a purebred anymore. That's true. But who cares, right? Yeah. Well, I'm, either way, I'm going to be the breeder, even if it's another Doberman, like, like we're, you know, breeders you're not like going to, you're not breeders going to a breeder like weirdly this. like own the rights to they don't, but they'll like sometimes claim they do. It's like weird. Breeding's weird. It's a weird industry, man. Let's, let's start like this should be our last segment, and we should like get an apology thing going where we like figure people to anger and upset. So yeah. we should do the breeders. Yeah, they're kind of an odd group, and then they they. It covers a wide, group. it covers a wide spectrum, right? Yeah. So you have like AKC breeders, right? Like they're really more focused on like super purebred, right? Yeah. And then there's, do people like breed just random puppies? Like just for the sake yeah, of Yeah, but they're not, I don't know if they're like breeders. Like, what does that mean? Breeders? What does that mean? I think anyone who purposefully has puppies to yeah, make money. I mean, they're like, are backyard breeders? What does that mean? A lot like, of dogs have been bred in the backyard. Yeah, and then you get into like Ohio and Pennsylvania, you get into these really unhealthy conditions of of dogs just in, you know, they have shelves and they just have dogs. Why Ohio and Pennsylvania? It's like an Amish thing. Or uh, But the Amish aren't doing that. Yes, they are. They, they breed they are dogs? They making money, dude. They, they breed dogs? Yeah, and they don't care. They just have rows of dogs and they just sell them and then... Do they keep on. them in small cages? Yes. People on this podcast already know about this. I don't know. Some do. Great. Start, if you, start a war with the Amish. Great job. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. Cross that off the old it's US tour. It's a real tour. thing. The Pennsylvania and Ohio dog breeding deal is a very strange thing. That If you go deep into, it's probably like horrifying it's like the mushroom thing well you got to explain to people what you're talking about so the mushroom thing was the guy on joe rogan who said like yeah i can't talk about mushrooms because he's afraid of like the lobby or portobello the, mushrooms port i didn't want to say it because i don't want to get the portobello people coming at me oh. thanks for nothing well you got to explain things yeah but we got to keep ourselves safe too <laughs> that's true <laughs> why i won't meet with anybody <laughs> uh Okay, yes, we don't want to get into war with uh, the Amish. The Amish. No, we love the Amish. I don't think. Or anyone in Ohio or Pennsylvania. No, my streets. wife's from Pennsylvania. Is she? She's from Amish country. Do you know? She's towards the Amish this because people. of this or no? No. You just saw this on YouTube or something? I don't know how I know this. So um, what do you think a good like breeder? Breeder. Like, no, like what do you, what, what do you think from, because I mean, I, I hate to always get in like the ethical stuff, but like yeah. you kind of, we represent I, something. We what, What's your representation? of? Like, I don't think we should. Do? I think that my opinions on, on breeding and the way to breed is its own segment because I have very strong opinions on it. Do you want to get into it? Not at the Not very end of this podcast. Okay. I think we get into, what was the other thing we were going to say next time? We're going to do something next time. Uh, we're going to talk about Bosco. What happened with Bosco when he died? Oh yeah. What happened with Bosco and, then and breeders and breeders. I think we kind of do that and then comments and then jump into that and I'll give you like, and you can ask me questions and we'll be like 10, 20 minutes on because it's a, it's a real thing. People want to know. They ask me all the time. How do I pick up? Not, not even how do I pick a puppy, but like, Oh my gosh, my phone. but, um, other questions. Um, about, and they, they make mistakes all the time. People make this one giant mistake when they pick a breeder or a person to buy a dog from a puppy to buy a dog from, they make, the biggest, there's one thing that matters so much more than, and nobody knows it. I didn't know it. I didn't know it when I was first getting a dog. And it's only from 
all my stuff is like, I've seen so many dogs come out, heard the backstories. Then I pair the problems with the backstories. Mm -hmm. And when you get into so many dogs, they just eventually, things just start to go click. In a good way? No, in a, your dog was born in this environment. Your dog now has problems. Mm. And like, and I just sort of, it was just constant, the same thing, the same thing in these and problems and the same thing in these problems. I don't know if it makes sense. No, that does make I'm sense. I'm going to tell it next one. So yeah, and the, but it won't include the Amish or it will. Well, they're doing the opposite of what I'm saying. So I guess it could, but I'm, I, that's specifically not them. Okay, so we should create- Is it a problem to get uh, have a problem with the Amish? Man, I don't want to have a problem with anybody. <laughs> I mean, think how but many isn't the Amish like a things. good group to have a problem with? No. Well, they're far away. I mean, they're, they're... far from us. That's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, okay. Could I do a couple more before we go? Okay. Couple okay. Deal here. Because if you don't want to talk are about good, are the best hardworking people. No, but I think they're the best to have a problem with us. Check this out. R. R. Patrick, seventy-nine. I bet you were born in nineteen seventy-nine paused at 855 and he's referring to our last video that i imagine he tagged the 855 and thank our last you. podcast or our last video no last podcast okay, i'm trying ahead. to keep it only on the podcast right, right. sorry we should repeat that to them yep if you want all the comments if you want to comment put it in this podcast we read it before the next one when i say we i mean me and then i screenshot him and but but joel reads them too yeah um but anyone who wants to help us out in the podcast if you if we have different segments Oh. If you put the little zero zero zeros in there and mark what we're saying, we would really appreciate it. You mean timestamp it? Timestamp it. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, pause at eight fifty five. Going to guess the danger to dog training is from anti adverse training cult member. <laughs> Sounds you're uh, all too familiar to what happened to Caesar. Not quite sure why this is such a huge deal to trainers that don't even deal with super difficult dogs. It's not like you're taking food from their mouths. They have uh, never taken those clients and those dogs anyway. Keep up the good work. Well said. That's interesting, right? Yeah. He's literally saying, Joel doesn't work with the same type of dogs that they do. Yeah. So why are you fighting? Or, you know, we're not fighting, but like, what, why are they coming at you if... Yeah, if they're not if they're not even working with aggressive because dogs. They, 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 that doesn't matter to them that so, they don't work with those dogs. They have no shame. So a funny thing, no integrity. Renee from our last one. Renee was the one who uh, the dog ran into her and yep. knocked her over, and yep. she was saying like, "You don't do this to the boss." Well, she was Comments. in the comments again. Yeah, we're gonna never stop talking about. She, her, yeah, right? she's yeah. You're gonna get yourself a, a side gig here. Um, she basically said like you know it wasn't a made-up story right because we were joking like this could be a made-up make up story made up. i didn't think it was made up. i yeah. i could have but you said even in the thing you're like for sure this is a real story just yeah. by how it sounds yeah but she was like if i won't share it with anyone else but i'll share my medical records if no one believes like, that's what she said yeah yeah so she said that oh but my God. trust us we um you know and she said she she kind of commented about it but i think ultimately our hearts you know we hope we wish you health right i mean uh, it sounds like she's having a bit of health issues oh, no. we don't want to see your medical records we'll take you at your word that yeah we already took you to your word. yeah yeah that you know maybe renee can be in every i used to watch dan patrick uh sports in the morning and he had like every show he had he had this one caller who called in for years maybe renee is like a topic of conversation in every podcast yeah Just, it's going to turn into just like a crazy amount of inside jokes and stuff. And like, yeah. you just have to accept that. Right. Okay. Ready? Oh, Two more. Oh, I love it. Two more. I love the comments. Look at this. Remington steel. That's a good YouTube name. <laughs> I say we call Prince's sired dog Remington steel. Remington. Yeah. It's not a bad name. That is... Remington. It's well, it's Remington's a, is a, a Remy gun. from gun. Gun Remington, it's a gun. Oh, I know. And then steel. I mean, it's I'm not saying. Awesome. And it's a show. Is it? It's a character on a show. Or it's a show. Bro, you sound I'm like looking me. This you sound up. like me where I said I Remington Mule. Steel. <laughs> I started. Or when I said I said ten Ted Bundy, but I meant Al Bundy, but then yeah. I I kept saying Bundy. Saying I'm bun saying it now. Bundy. Bundy. 
yeah al bund i go al bundy yeah like what is that yeah remington steel remington steel is a show bro it's like when you made fun of me or or who was it that's making fun of me about the 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 donkeys and the horses and then i was like i said donkey and then i said horse and i just said mule (laughs) like really weird or the way you say and you talk to me about it every day and i've never i've literally never said anything to you you say channel so strangely (laughs) channel Sean Cannell. No, you say channel. channel. You go, uh, your your channel. That's what you say. That we won't never. Get into it. That never happened. It, I'm okay. gonna go ahead. Are you? You go ahead. Do do your reading, and then I'll. I don't know. Spell Remington. Okay, let me read Remington, the comment while you work on that. Okay. Remington. Okay, Remington Steel. Steel. Look, it comes up right there. Yep. Oh, wow. A show with Pierce show. Brosnan. Oh wow. No, I knew it. I thought it was, they were talking about the Remington revolver. Bro, I'm I'm dating myself. 1982. Wow, that's like Knott's Landing level. You were bit, yeah, in Dallas. I was alive. And Dynasty. I was alive. I won't say how old I was. He says, I love the comment you shared, the woman who had Joel talking in her head when her dog was charging her. Uh, This is who we just talked about. That's funny. That's who we just talked about. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Joel's gems often enter my head with a high energy six month Doby pup. Not cool is one of my go tos in his techniques. Head halter. Knee up to jump, stop jumping, butt flip, uh, playing with other dogs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, has been so helpful. Thank you. Good. Beckman bosses. What do you think of that? Mm. Yeah, it's cool. No, so, no. full metal allosaurus. What type of names do you guys got here? It's Mules. YouTube names. They just make them up. <laughs> Mules are the cross between donkeys and horses. Laugh out loud. He's laughing out loud at me. Not the other way around. Donkeys are in fact super dangerous and are more demanded for farm protection than dogs. They are hyper aggressive and strong toward animals and people they don't know. Did you know this? Bro, you got to repeat that. You want to hear that again? <laughs> I was like thinking of this thing I was going to say. What were you thinking of? So occasionally on the YouTube back end app, or I don't, uh, in, I don't, I don't whatever you want to call right? me, uh, a, a channel person, they, they, they'll say, somebody channel likes your likes your comment yeah but obviously there's too many likes it won't tell me everybody will one in a hundred yeah but it'll say somebody yeah you know how people pick weird youtube names yeah for like six months i thought somebody was their youtube name but it was just and this one guy or girl whose youtube name was somebody kept liking all my stuff but it was an actual person. It was a, it was all the people. Oh, okay. And wow. I was like, this somebody really likes all my things. But it says somebody, meaning everybody. Yeah. Anybody a, who likes it. I guess the background for that is there is a app called YouTube Studio, which is yeah. the back end where you can see. Have you seen it when it says somebody likes? Does it um, show you that? I think I had that on my own, so I think I yeah, saw that. So yeah, so somebody, I thought I thought somebody was was one person. It was every single person. Yeah, so you were in a the little world. Bit, um, Sorry, that, if no, that you're, wasn't boring. You're fine. Did okay, you say that one more time. So the donkey thing, uh, the donkey thing was this. Um, I'm just making fun of me. Um, so mules are a cross between donkeys and horses. Laugh out loud, not the other way around. Donkeys are in fact super dangerous and are more demanded for farm protection than dogs. They are hyper aggressive and strong toward animals and people they don't know. This is a good one. John says documentaries are very persuasive tools. Blackfish is what what he's referring to is the conversation last week about uh, blackfish, which is the what is it? It's the um, the documentary killer whale documentary. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say orca, but there are two document there are two documentaries on Michael Jackson. One will convince you that he is guilty of child abuse, more or less. The other will convince you that he is completely innocent. Yes. Is that your answer? To to what? Would you think of them throwing the king of pop in there like that? Oh, yeah. No, that's it's it's that they you can be convinced. Many people could be could be convinced both ways. And I guess people do that with your videos too. So you are a little sensitive to that. Yeah. I yeah. People um yeah, people get railroaded all the time. I think I'm never going to forget that you said I said channel word. I think channel. I said you say channel. That's what you say. Channel. Okay, let me finish with this last one, then we'll wrap everything up, give everybody a little bit of yeah. um, breakdown, and then we'll we'll yeah. uh, go get some uh, 
board and brew. So we should, <laughs> never mind. Uh, Kimberly, I'm loving your channel. Can you discuss or do a video about what to do with an unexpected dog? Oh, I did, I, we already went over that one. Oh, my God. My bad. Oh, your bro. ebook and merchandise would be awesome. Looking forward to it. Okay. That's we're at it. an hour 45. Are we really? Yeah. Okay. Last one. Okay. Last one. Last one. I it promise. better be good. It can't be like props to us. Uh, forget those. Those are great. Okay. Or David props to Dines. you, which you've said a couple of them, and props to you, yeah, which is true. very interesting that's that you that's, chose those. They were good. Uh, they always had like a segment. Anyways, uh, David Dines. 479. Bloody hell, I'm not a stalker, honestly. Listen oh, yeah, to this. I, this I keep wanting to comment. You say you won't do a sit down with anyone, oh, I yeah. guess, because you're a pragmatist, Joel. People want to spend time with you. Pragmatist. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Joel likes to correct people's um, English. Uh, people want to spend time with people they like, right? If you agree with a lot of people or a lot, a lot of what someone says, uh, like I do with you, then you find yourself liking them. It's natural to want to sit I, down with I you. I agree. I do, but I'll never happen. And it's not about money. Yeah, I don't know the money part. Bro, there's people who I watch on social media and I'm like, I want to meet them so bad and they're not stars. They're just some, I like them for some reason and I don't know why. And I want to talk to them. Um, I get it. I get it. Then this guy, or so then Donna Miller comes right back at him with, yeah. for anybody questioning Joel about not meeting with people that do not post their real name, 390 subscribers, something subscriber, do not know, wanting to have a sit down, think about that seriously, not the woman who made the comment. Do you get what she's trying to say? Yeah, sort of. I mean, she's just like, you don't even know who these people are. They're just, yes. like, they're yes. just random. You know, yeah, but that guy wasn't that bad. It's funny when people get into like arguments on there. No, there was a good argument. But that's a good point by Donna. There was a good Great argument point. that was going on in the last video. And I, it was like getting heat. They're kind of going back and forth at each other. And I was like, I know. what's going on with this? <laughs> um, last one, promise. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, come on, guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw a little heat at our way here. Yeah. Jens says Jens is from Bulgaria, probably. Uh, come on, guys. Upload the audio to podcast engines. A video on YT alone, YouTube, uh, where people talk is not a podcast, it's a vidcast. Please, guys. He's not wrong. Let me listen to this on my favorite audio podcast stream app. Well, you should tell us what your favorite stream app is. So Yeah, he's not wrong. Yeah. It's so kind of not a podcast. I think, you know. But YouTube music. Yeah, YouTube it's a music. YouTube music is a podcast. It's, audio. it's coming out. Uh, or I mean, it's already there right now. Uh, and then this one will obviously come out. And I think, you know, I think people are under the assumption that we've got like 400 workers in the background here doing all this stuff. Yeah, bro. It's no not one. the case. No one. It's a small operation. Yeah. Small. It's very small. It's very lean. Lean and mean. So anything else you got to share to these folks? No. Merchandise. Yeah. Will we will uh, yeah unleashed is the promo. Oh yeah, ten um, percent off 10 unleashed off. all capitals. Um, I'm gonna get something. You'll probably get something. Yep, we have to like buy it. Or <laughs> we have to pay for our own stuff because the company that does it has to get their giant cut. Yeah, which is fine. It's a huge cut. And then on top of that, just to be clear, yeah. you're buying it from Teespring, which is a super legit company, and they also go yeah. by Spring. So if you have any issues with your merchandise, don't call us, <laughs> call them. Yeah, I think they're pretty good at it. Yeah, they're supposed to be pretty good at it, but just so yeah. you know. But like, we have to buy our own. We have to, we're going to buy it just like you. If you see yeah. me in the shirt, I bought that shirt. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's no free shirts. Yeah, so check that out. We'll get the podcast out rocking tomorrow, Wednesday, right? Yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah. Or so, we will. So that'll be good. I think for the thumb, thumbnail, we should do uh, Ramsey from Game of Thrones. Oh, the scene with the dog. I don't know if we can use that. Why would we use that? Let them block it. I don't think they. I don't think they flag uh, thumbnails. Oh, Ramsey from Game of Thrones, bro, That's with such the a good... Kane Corso right here. That'd be awesome. That'd, That'd also be, be super awesome. easy. And we'll see if I'm right. We'll watch that scene and see if it's all Kane Corso and Dogo Argentinos. I've also. That's my. That's my proclamation. Is that the right word? Yes. That's my proclamation and like donkeys and mules. We'll see if I'm right. And if I'm not, you guys will point it out as you should. Yeah. And I think maybe that last one we'll put instead of a, uh, instead of a killer whale, we'll put a donkey as the thumbnail. Cause you know, do a donkey. Yeah, no, that sounds good. That sounds good. Anything else? Otherwise I think we should just, yeah, let's go be done, man. Room.
Yeah. I'm hungry. Okay, and all you guys that wanted a three hour, I took him to one hour and 15 Bro, minutes. Somebody's you like, guys owe me. Somebody goes, the podcast is too long. I know. See that? Then stop watching it. <laughs> <laughs> At any point. Yeah, if, yeah, like we said last week, if ever you don't like it, just turn it off. Like, go do something. Go hang out with your family, right? You know, if we're your only family, then stick around with us. But yeah, the one guy said, the podcast is too long. I was, I want to be like, how, how long do you want it to be? Like, you want it to be five minutes? That's not a podcast. It's got to be long. Yeah. And then this other guy said, he said, you may got to make it three hours. It's lit. I like just learned what the word it's lit meant like a year ago. Yeah, it is lit. All right, we're out of here. All right, board and brew. Let's do it. I'm starving. Good stuff, man. Yeah. All right, go buy the merch. See you guys.